Hey everybody, welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This video is for MM207 Statistics. It's going to focus on information that you'll need for all of the units, but specifically units 2 and 3. And we're going to talk today about StatCrunch, how to find and use StatCrunch, how to open up textbook data sets in StatCrunch, and also how to find the Unit 4 Project data set and open that up in StatCrunch. We're also going to look at how to calculate summary statistics in StatCrunch, like mean, median mode, variance, standard deviation, Q1, Q3, and so on. And we're going to look at how to build some graphs in StatCrunch. So let's get started. First, if you click on the course home in your page, it'll bring you to your announcements area. And then if you scroll down to the learning resources button and click on that, it'll take you to an area in your class filled with learning resources such as PowerPoint guides for all of these sections in your textbook, student solution manuals, and so on. But we're going to focus on StatCrunch. So let's click on that, which takes us down to the StatCrunch area. From this location, when we open StatCrunch, it's going to give us automatic access to all the data files that are in your textbook. So let's do that and see what that does. When I click on StatCrunch, it'll open up StatCrunch in my computer. You'll notice that it takes a moment to open it up. And so we'll give it a second to do that. Everyone's computer goes at a different rate. And so don't get frustrated if your computer takes a few minutes to open up StatCrunch. Sometimes if it looks like it's paused or it isn't continuing, again, this is just a connection issue. What I'll sometimes do is close it and just click it again. Uh, sometimes my computer just doesn't connect the first time, and you can see that that method does work. Now what we're seeing here on the left-hand side is all of the data sets that are available to you from your textbook. Notice that they're automatically here on the left-hand side when you open up StatCrunch. And if I scroll down, I can see every single one of them. When you do your discussion assignments, you can choose any one of these data sets to work with. All you have to do is click it, and it'll open up in this StatCrunch area. So I'm going to choose the Male Health Exam Results data set, and I'm going to click that. When I click it, it opens up that data inside of my StatCrunch area. Again, if it doesn't open up super fast or it takes a couple of minutes, don't get frustrated. It really just depends on your connection speed at that moment. Now, once I open up one of my data sets, one of the important things to notice is that each row of my data set represents an individual in that sample. Like this is male number 1391. This is his age, his height, his weight, his pulse, etc. This is male number 2129. This is his age, his height, his weight, and so on. Why do we use these numbers? Well, because we're not really allowed to use a person's name or social or anything like that because of privacy issues. So instead, we have random numbers that represent each male in our sample data set here. So each row represents a male in our data set and all the information about that male. Now, each column in our data set represents a variable. Like, this is the age column. Each male has their own age. So this first male is 58, this second male is 22, this third male is 32, and so on. So age is one of our variables. Height and weight and waist and pulse and so on. Each of these represents a different variable in our data set that we're using to describe each one of our male persons. Now, as we look at each variable, it's important to note, is the variable discrete or continuous? Is it quantitative or qualitative? And is it nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio? In this case, age happens to be a continuous variable, because I can be any ages between zero and whatever my maximum age is. This is a quantitative variable because it's a quantity. And it's actually a ratio variable because the zero is meaningful. When I'm age zero, I have absolutely no age. Now, if I look at a different variable like pulse, pulse is actually a discrete variable rather than continuous because we cannot have a fraction of a heartbeat. 
So if this is a whole value, and so it's called discrete. To learn more about these types of things, you want to check out the PowerPoint guide in Doc Sharing, some of the PowerPoint guides in the Learning Resources area, and also your textbook. But right now, we're going to focus on calculating different statistics and graphics in StatCrunch. Let's say I want to calculate mean, median, mode, variance, and so on for some of my variables like age, height, and weight. Let's say I'm curious what the average age is and maybe what the average cholesterol level is and so on. To do these types of calculations, we choose stat and then summary stats. Now, in this case, I want to look at information about the columns because the columns represent each of my variables like the age column, the height column, the cholesterol column, and so on. So I'm going to choose columns. Now StatCrunch says, okay, cool, which variables do you want to look at? I can look at as many as I want. I want to look at age, height, weight, and I'm also curious about maybe pulse and maybe cholesterol and BMI. I can look at all of these or as many as I want to. Now if I click on next, it shows me all the things it's going to calculate for me. It's going to calculate the mean, the variance, standard deviation, the error, the median, the range, the min, the max, Q1 and Q3 for all of the variables that I've selected. Well that sounds perfect, so I'm going to click calculate and here it magically appears. For my age, for example, my average age is 35.475. I've got the variance, deviation, and so on. My average height is 68.335. And it gives me all the statistical results for all of the variables I selected, all in this one table. Now let's say I want to save this and put it into a Word document. Well, I have two options. Let's click on Options to find out what those are. I can either copy it and paste it into a Word document or I can save it directly to my computer. I'm going to try to copy this. So let's click copy. Now I'm going to open up a Word document and I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose to paste this. I'll choose that middle option because I like the way that looks and here's all my data and information in my Word document. Alright, that's great. And we just learned how to quickly calculate all of these summary statistics for any of the variables in the columns that we want to. All right, well, what's next? What if I want to make a graph? If I click on graphics, I can see that there are so many different graphs I can choose from. Let's start with something simple like a bar plot. I want to use my data. And let's say I just want to look at a bar chart of the age of my male subjects. All right, let's create the graph. There it is, as simple as that. I have two people age 17, I have two people age 18, and so on. Again, I can copy and paste this graph right into Word, or I can save it to my computer. Let's try to copy again. Let's click Copy, and I'm actually going to click that twice because sometimes it doesn't copy for me the first time. And these are little tricks that you learn, never needing to get frustrated. If something doesn't work out the first time, just kind of try it again. Let's open up my Word document here, and let's try to paste, and there it is. Now if I want to resize it, I click on it, and I can actually change the size as well. Very, very convenient. All right, great. Now what if I want to make another different type of graph? I again click on Graphics, and I have so many choices and I can choose whatever variables I want. If Let's say I want to make a histogram of the different heights. I can create this graph, and there's my histogram. Let's say I want to make a box plot to learn about Q1, Q2, and Q3. And let's say I want to do that for the age. Create the graph, and there it is. This shows me my minimum age, my Q1, my median or Q2, my Q3, and my maximum age. So much information here in StatCrunch. And once you get the hang of it, pretty straightforward to use. All right, thanks for joining me. And tune in next time to learn more about different types of statistical analysis. Thanks.